section here with dirt race light. Well, you see we're continuing on with our metric frame based street stock build. Now in this episode, I think this is number 10 in the build, we've got to put all of this rear part on the car. Right now, we're right at the breakaway point behind the rear end. We've got our 22 gallon fuel cell here. We need to create a safe, rigid mounting structure for the fuel cell, and then also a superstructure around it that's gonna create some safety margin for the car itself, something to mount the body to, and definitely number one importance, protecting the fuel cell. All of that in this episode, let's get busy. If you've been subscribed to our channel and following along as we do these builds, you know I do somewhat let the design evolve as I'm working my way through it. And like, this was no different on this chassis. I knew I wasn't going to be able to put the fuel cell in front of the rear end like we did on the 7377 frame build that we did two years ago. I've got a playlist on that. Check the channel out. All the videos are there. But this one, we knew it was going to have to be behind the rear end. But I didn't know exactly how I wanted to get all of this done. And so earlier this week, we got all of this knocked out and done in the previous episode for this build. And now I'm looking at this, and so I've kind of studied on it, and I've come up with a design. Um, the inside part I'm pretty locked in on, and then the outside we are going to kind of look, and, and we might have to make a few adjustments, but I did want to kind of lay it out here and show you what I was thinking. So if we look top down, that's the car with our springs there and our rear end going across, then it's going to be like this. I'm going to be right up against that back tube, and we're going to put some tubing around it. All right, that'll go around this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a separate frame structure out here. And these two are going to be independent of each other. So I can catch the wall with the right rear of the car, for example, or take a hard hit in the left rear or something, and I am not going to be pushing on this structure for this fuel cell. Now, how we take and we tie this and how this crosses across in order to create that structure, where my head's at is, is I know the fuel cell in the center. I'm locked in on that design. And so we're going to put the fuel cell in the middle and we're going to take some measurements and figure out where it's at. And then after I get that done and locked in, then we're going to figure out what that outside needs to look like. And I'm just showing you this. I'm showing you kind of like how I make the meatloaf because it's, you know, when the people look at the finished product, it's like, well, where are the blueprints for that? How did you figure that out? Well, how did you? Well, this is how I figure it out. I get as far as I can and figure out the parts that I know I can lock in on and do and get them done. And then that helps me to figure out where that next step is. So we know the fuel cell part. Let's lock in, get that done. I got my two down tubes cut, mouthed, and ready to go. Um, something just to be aware of as far as like the way I go about thinking about this. Everything right here over this rear end, I am not concerned with weight. I can, I can beef this up. I want from the rear hoop of the car to the back of this rear end here on this frame, this is one solid unit. No twist, no flex, no nothing in between here. My twist and flex happens between this unit and the front. That's where I want the twist to happen. All of this right here can be one big beefy unit. I can use as much steel as I want right here because no matter what, I promise you, I'm gonna be bolting lead on right here. As I come rearward, I have to be more and more conscious of how much weight I add as I move away from, because I'm getting outside of these coil springs. Anything inside the coil springs is good weight. Anything outside the coil springs is bad weight. Okay, but you have to be safe, even if that means adding weight in a bad spot. You still have to be safe first. But let's get these. I've already made my marks. And let's get these jokers on here. We got our two short legs here welded in solid, and I have already fabricated our frame for our fuel cell. Now, this is actually what I'm gonna bolt the fuel cell into. So I'm gonna bolt this up. It's got bolts that run the whole way around it. So I'm gonna bolt this thing in, it'll be a lot safer. 
but it's three quarter inch square and it fits just right around it and it's actually going to be under the flange on the fuel cell and it's going right in here um, where that that flange of that fuel cell is right level with the center of that tube that's going to put me where the because what I want is I want the, the lines and everything on the fuel cell, I want them to be like an inch or two below the deck. I want some room in there. I don't want fuel lines to be like beating against the deck, nothing like that. And so that's as high as I can get. So I'm going to take and I'm going to flatten these welds off right here where that square tube can just weld up flat. Now we'll tell you all this fuel cell has been drained. Fuel vapors are dangerous as well. Matter of fact, they're very dangerous because they can explode instead of just burning. But what I did was is I've drained it, but then I've capped it as well. But anytime I can use a fire blanket, I'm going to use a fire blanket as well, just for extra safety, because I am going to be welding around this fuel cell. Your safety is your responsibility. I've taken precautions to make sure that I'm safe working around it. Nonetheless, your safety is your responsibility, folks. Be careful. square so I did this at like 24 and an eighth it's 24 inches so I wanted just a little room to be able to slide the tank down in there so it's 24 and an eighth inches is what it is and it's 25 inches this way to fit this fuel cell while I have room for the flange on the front so I have to kind of wing it until I get it spotted and then we can start checking it with levels so We'll make a few guesses, put a few spots, and then go with it. instead of right here. So if my tubes are right up here, I'm okay. I just can't have a tube going across this zone right below it. But I really want some angle like that. So maybe I have a tube that goes and comes up and I have a cap tube, big tube go across right here. And then I turn around and I run a tube at an angle. So now I can get some triangle effect going on right there. And then I'll have that one like that. So I've got one there. There's one here, I'll have one here, I'll have one here, and I'll have one triangling out like that. And then my shock mount's going to be right here below it, so I get under the car, I can reach up, unbolt the shock, and the tube's up above it here. That works. Do I bend this and use inch and a half, or do I stick with a little bit less tube? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with an inch and a quarter, and I'll just cut and angle it. I don't have a I don't have a die for an inch and a quarter. So I will just take and cut, cap, and angle it and make all of these bends is how I'll do it. It's just how I figure it out, y'all.
these things together. Not sure it's exactly where it needs to be, but we will hold it up there and find out. See how close we are. That, my friend, will work. Yep, that'll work. Do that twice right there. And we're on it. I got both my tubes here done, ready to go. So I think what I'm gonna do is just throw it up here, kind of level it to the bottom of the tank here. It's gonna be just a little bit lower than the tank. And then I am going to figure out, I'm gonna cut me a little 90 degree ledge notch right there. I'm gonna notch that in tied onto that tank right there. I'm gonna come. Not sure exactly how this is gonna work out, but we are gonna make it happen. Yeah, I got an idea how it's gonna happen. Not sure it's gonna work, but I got an idea. I want that square tube to be halfway, so I'm gonna make a slot halfway in. Halfway. Top of the slot right there, 90 degrees. Bottom of the slot, straight horizontal. Well, either that works or it don't. Let's see. Come on, you can do it. Sometimes I'm really good, y'all. Let's do it on here real quick. Right there. That right there. I don't want that actually touching the fuel cell. I'm gonna back it off just a hair. Kinda, I got me about an eighth inch gap down through there. Well, probably a sixteenth. like that and I'll pull the fuel cell out and weld it all up good and solid. Yeah, maybe one more. Let it, let it. I got them both in, got them welded up all the way around on both sides. All right, back here, I'm dropping back to one inch. I got one notched here. I'm gonna split the tube and it's gonna go in right there. Sit in there, girl. I'm gonna have to 
stick this and then and then do that. I know where this one goes. Let me get it in there. Okay. Right here, so I'll go ahead and weld that up solid. And that's all I'm going to do for this structure. And then here and here, I'm going to do a tube that's going to run forward some kind of way. But I have got to start my other structure first. I've got, I've got some tiling plates that have got to go out here first. And then I can run this tube. So we are close to getting to the outside structure. I'm going to cut two pieces that are two inches wide and 12 inches tall. And these are going to be on the rear of our frame stub where it stops. All right, so I made two of these, one for each side. So this is two inches wide. It's 12 inches tall. Now check this out. This is a piece of diamond plate. Yeah, I would have rather used flat steel, but my 3 8 and my 5 16 steel, I've got all shorts and I didn't have anything that was 12 inches long. It's all like 10 inches or left, li less little pieces that I've got because I've cut up and I guess I wasn't planning right. But, uh, but my son had a big chunk of quarter inch diamond plate and that will work fine. I'm gonna put the flat side towards what I want to be my smooth side to like tie on this rear and I guess I call these like cutaway plates. It's not really a breakaway plate, but it's a point where that we can cut and grind it flat smooth and we know everything in front of that should be square and straight and we just chop off at this plate and we'll right back onto it if we ever want to replace bent up stuff back here. So I'm going to throw it right here. I'm going to make sure that it is not sticking out past this frame rail at all. So I'm going to get in there. So now that we got our plates on here, I got some one inch tube right here. I'm gonna come right in here, create a stabilizer and I'm gonna put one on both sides, just like this. That way I've got room, plenty of room here to tie on. Oh. Our mounting system for the fuel cell is complete now. This is a complete self-contained system right here, ready to go. That's all I'm gonna do for this, other than some paint before it's over. But all of this is inside of a larger structure here. Uh, and so that's our phase two. And I drew out what I've got here, just kind of roughed it out on the board here, because we're just gonna kind of figure this design out right now. And there's a couple of things I wanna, I wanna point out here and these will hold true for this small metric frame on your build. So I got some numbers here that could be helpful for you. Um, where I cut this frame off is five inches past the center of the axle. All right, so I've got five inches going past it. Now that's important because like in the crate racing street stock, you're only allowed to cut the frame off up to the center of the axle. And so I'm five inches past that, which is good. I can go no closer than the center, all right? Really, you don't need to go to the center because you need all of these mounts and stuff to be out behind the rear end for your shock mount, where that you've got, where the spring can mount. You know, if you try to cut it off right at the center of the axle, you're gonna have problems with things that are mounted and take up room over the top of the axle. So just keep that in mind before you start building the whole car. Just cause the rules say you can cut one off right there, don't do that, okay? All right, so plus five inches right there. Now, my rules say that from the center of the axle to the back of the body, straight back can only be 48 inches. I'm already five inches right here, so that means 43 more inches. So I know that from the mount point to where my body's gonna end is gonna be 43 inches, and then turn around, 
and I measured from this outside edge to outside edge, and I came up with 45 and a quarter inches outside edge to outside edge. I'm going to take and say 45 inches because where I'm gonna mount, I'm gonna go an eighth inch inside of that edge on both sides. I need to have some room to weld to. I don't leave like a notch sticking out past the edge. So I'm gonna go 45 instead of 45 and a quarter. That's gonna vary a little bit frame to frame. And according to, you know, whether or not you've judiciously got on this, you know, this frame over here and beat on it with a hammer or something to give you some room. So just keep that in mind. Your car, you could measure less than that. This is completely stock and has not been tampered with. So 45 and a quarter is probably pretty close to stock. We're gonna come down. We're gonna make a bend. We're gonna go around. We're gonna make a bend. We're gonna come back up, okay? So we're gonna have one tube. And I wanna just do this as one shot, one tube. And one of the reasons is, is that, yeah, I expect this tube to get bent up. I expect this tube to get damaged. I don't want it to be this complex contraption with a whole lot of different pieces put together that's difficult to replace. You know, like I have one tube, I write down my numbers on how I bend it up. If I do bend it up, I just make another one, cut it off, put it right back on. On these bends, it's gonna be really critical for us to hit exactly that 45. So let me give you a little refresher. I'm using a cheater tube that I've made up. The way I make these up, I've got a video in my first build where I show exactly how cheater tubes work. But basically, you've marked like this is a big mark that shows where it goes in the uh, where it goes into the bender rat. Like this is my mark to show like the indexing point. And then before I ever bent this, I made one inch marks all the way around it. So that's how I know how much tube is being used. And then I bend it, and so that creates this index that lets me know like where to put it in and how much tubing it will take and where it will come out. And the way you use that, so now that I've done that, I can measure this and I can show y'all how this works out because it's 45 inches across and we're gonna go 45 inches out. 43 is what we're after and we're gonna leave two extra inches that we're gonna trim down before we weld it on where we get it exactly where we want it. Cause I want that tube to be at the back of where the body, that's gonna be my guide. I'm gonna know where the back of my body goes by that tube. We're gonna put a bumper past that that actually sticks out past that. But this is like basically gonna line up with the body. And the way this works, I agree with Jamie Lewis and what he said, start your bins in the middle smart's the way to do it so i know that from the start of the bend to the start of the bend that's 33 let me write this right side up where y'all can see it 33 inches from edge of bend to edge of bend how do i know that well i know that because on this cheater that i made where that bend starts i can take a square and measure from this outside edge over and that's exactly six inches on my die for an in this inch and a half that's how that works so that's exactly six inches. So if I take 45 and I subtract six on one side, six on the other side, that's minus 12 inches. So that means that from there across is 33 inches in the middle. So that's how I come up with that. So if it's 33 inches all the way across and, I, and I'm gonna mark a middle point to go out, I'm 16 and a half inches on each side from my mark in the middle. So I'm gonna split my tube in half and now I know exactly where to start each bend. Now, how much tubing do I need? I know from using this that I'm six inches across this way, and then I can count my marks in between here, and I know that it actually consumes eight inches of tube going around that corner, okay? So I know that that corner right there is six inches one way, six inches the other, but consumes eight inches of tubing. So now I'm 33 in the middle, I'm eight here and I'm eight here. I'm gonna go 45 inches from here to here because we're gonna trim it down afterwards. So it's six inches across. So if I said 45 minus the six inches right here, well, that's gonna be 39 inches of tubing here and 39 inches of tubing here. So that's how I figure up to have the right amount of tubing plus a little bit of extra before I start bending where I don't come up short because this is one shot all the way around. 
And we want to write these numbers down. This, should, this is something we want to be able to do easily. We bend it up. We just bend another one. Slap it right back on there. And so I am 39, 8, 33, 8, and 39. Those are my numbers. Comes up with 127 inches of tube. That's how you do it. Nothing to it. Now, there's a couple of more bends that we're going to do. What we're going to do is, is we're going to repeat this center section again, and we're going to take and we're going to go straight up over the top. What we're going to do is, is we're creating some vertical, some vertical protection for our tank. So if somebody climbs over the top of the back of my car, I don't want the top of my fuel cell to be exposed and the bumpers below it. So we're going to have under the deck of the car, we're going to have a hoop that's going to go up and be higher than the fuel cell to create some protection up here. And also it's going to create some mount points for our deck. All right, so it's serving two purposes, but it's going to tie on here and it's going to tie on here. We're going to technically have it going across behind the fuel cell where we can lift the fuel cell up and take it out without having to like cut this stuff apart and re-weld it, anything like that. It's also going to give us an opportunity to be able to tie, tie on a higher tube back to this bridge, like up here up top. This bended piece that goes across the top, it's the exact same numbers and bent the exact same way where if that lines up. So we'll bend then put this bottom one in and we'll take some measurements and then figure out exactly what to trim this top one to and put it in and everything else. We're just going to plug it in like Lego blocks. So there it is. We just figured it out. Let's do it. Bad book fair to you. All right, we got this joker bent up. We got her at 45 inches outside to outside. Throw my T-square on here, and I'm going to go 43 inches exact. Get that right there. And then get that right there and that right there. Hang you down. All right, you sit there a minute. I'm going to get that magnet on. Stay. Come on, that girl. put this on. I want to get on here just so I can measure. I know that I want that top of that hoop to be eight inches above this and that is eight inches from there to there which is the same as it is up there so that makes sense. So I want it to be like 16 inches across right there is what I want that to be. And I want it to be right here just right behind this hoop. I want to be able to put the fuel cell in but I want it to be as close to the fuel cell as possible so that I get just like this headache rack right here. So if somebody climbs up over my car, I've got something sitting here that's going to push them up over the fuel cell instead of cutting into the fuel cell. So 16 inches. So I'm going to use my same formula. You know, I was 33 in the middle 
And then I know that six and six, it takes eight inches around there. So if it's 16 down, I know six of it is in the turn, but it takes eight and then 10 more. So 10 and eight is 18. So 18, 33, 18. Cut that tube and I will cut it one inch longer on each side. So 19, 33, 19, that is, let's see, 38, 33, it's 71 inches. So I'm gonna cut a 71 inch piece, split in the middle, make my bends, put that piece on. I've got it bent up and I wanna show y'all something. Like real world, you know, it's like, how do you bend those and get those to exactly match up? You don't, you don't. You're never gonna be so perfect that everything just matches up. And like that's exactly in the center of that. So I will, I'll bend, I'll come up a little short and have to go a little further. A lot of times I end up going a little bit too far because you try to creep up on it, but you, you know, you've got the spring in the bend where you pull past it and it springs back. So it's, it's an art, not a science to it. But like I am closed in just a little bit, probably about a quarter inch. And I mean, I could make it work but like what I'll do is I'll take and I'll look at the two sides. That one's coming up dead 90. That one's coming up like 87 degrees on this side. So I know that this side is oversprung. One of the benefits of a big, heavy, beefy jig to like lock cars on, see that I beam right there? And I hadn't been showing this on film, but I do it. And I was like, I need to show people how I do this because nobody can just make these perfect every time. So like I hang it in that eye beam right there and then I'll just take some of that corner out. And you can take a little, so like a degree or two, no problem. Now if you bend one 10, 15 degrees too far, start over because you're gonna kink it. But you can just, man that doko is freaking awesome. <laughs> So just like it right there, and that's what I do. Years ago when I was racing in the late 90s, early 2000s, I had a one ton service truck with one of those big Jordan service beds on it. And I had me a piece of two inch gas pipe that was welded on the back of it. I could stick a tube in and bend, which I used it, you know, working on heavy equipment stuff. I need to bend something. I just stick it in there and bend it. Uh, but that like, you can just come up with something. You just gotta attach it to something really beefy. And let's see where I'm at. Yeah, I'm really close. One more time. All right. All right, yeah, that's it. So I've got it one inch long. I'm gonna take a half inch of that off. The other half inch is gonna be to make the fish mouth. For the rest of this structure back here, I'm gonna use this inch and a quarter 083 delcal tubing. And I cut this upper tubes that's gonna come across and down first, because I'm gonna see if I can't lock this thing in at zero. I mean, it was close, but it was like a half a degree off, and I think I can go ahead and get it just to zero if I lock these in now. So I've got like a ratchet strap pulling up a little on that side and down a little on this, and it has just a little bit of twist in this when I bend it. What that come from is when I ran it through the bender, I wasn't like perfectly flat on a zero plane when I put the second bend in. Maybe I was like a half a degree off or something, and so that made that show up. Like even though I've got these at the exact same point on the front, it put a little bit of twist on the tail back here. So, and I can straighten it out here by doing this. It's not a problem. So I've got these cut knots ready to go. Throw these in here. And so what I'm doing here, I've still got my magnet. Somebody jumped in the comments and said, where's your magnets? And I'm like, yeah, I got some somewhere. So I dug them out. There we go. So what I'm doing here, I'm right off this corner, notched around and everything, and it just barely fits. Hindsight's 2020. The next time I do this, if I stay with this design, this two inch wide pad right here, that needs to be two and a half inches wide, y'all, just for note, um, to make all the tubing and everything work. Because I ended up like putting a little notch in between those two tubes where they have room. It's fine, but like if I cut this off, like that's notched around that other tube, so it makes it a little more complicated. All right, so got you lined up. Are you there? There, right there. Perfect. All right, so that's lined up. Another one. 
Now, I'm right in the middle of that bend right there, and I'm coming to the center here. So I'm coming towards the center on an angle right there. And what I ended up doing, I went 24 inches, so 12 inches out from the center both ways. This is going to be my bumper tie-on point. So my body is going to come back as far as this tube. And then I'm going to put some tie-on tubes that like I can slide a bumper in. And I may have a bumper. What I'll do is, is I will have a bumper that comes out far enough so that if I hook a chain on this with a wrecker and pick the car up, I'm not going to tear my spoiler up. Learn that the hard way, y'all. So I'm going to have a little bumper come back right here. Probably will not go all the way out to those uh, panels out here. Probably be just this wide, maybe a little bend hoop, go down a little bit lower, something like that. I won't put that on until we get the body and everything done. It'll be one of the last things I do because I'm going to make sure when I pick the car up, and you know, like uh, record drivers, you know, they drop it in granny low and dump the clutch and the car swings. I wanna make sure that the chain that swings doesn't swing into my spoiler. So like, I'll just wait and put that on afterwards where that I can figure out where to set that distance and stuff. All right, so that's in, that's in. Let's spot those in place to the other side. The next tubes I'm going to put in are the ones that are flat across the bottom and I'm going to put that angle in. Um, I did want to show something here. So like, I could put this tube directly across and tie into this point where that like the bumper connection is going to be. And that is definitely going to create the most strength as far as if I take a hit from the rear, uh, transferring that through and keeping from all of this crushing. All right, because you know, like if I come here to the center, like this across here. Well, this point right here, if I take a really hard hit, this corner's gonna fold in, it's gonna buckle right here, this tube's gonna fold downwards, and so this point right here is gonna move in that direction. It's gonna just push right down in that direction. I actually want that uh, for, for two reasons. One, it as this angle if this angle is real narrow so like instead of being way over here like this as i roll that angle back well the whole point of that triangle is to help this thing to have some stability side to side all right so that i don't just get pushed over with you know with a, a light hit right here you know i want to bend this tube in maybe and have to fix it or maybe it's okay and i can leave it alone i don't want the whole thing to get wrapped on me too easy you know to one side uh, and then the other part is that like, okay, I get, I've got all this strength to take a direct hit from the back. And if I get hit really hard from the rear, I do want that energy to be absorbed and go somewhere. I don't wanna just transfer that all through, you know, into my chassis, into my seat, into my head and neck. You know, it's like, if I make it too rigid, all it's going to do is just transfer that hit all the way forward through into the car. And so for me, the compromise is, you know, yeah, I got a tube coming right down into it. I'm going to tie the bumper on right here, but I'm going to come at an angle and I'm going to leave this just on this tube right here. So I'm accepting that this is a failure point, but I'm going to have more strength side to side to keep this thing from getting twisted up on me too easy and it's going to fail where I want it to instead of transferring the lick into me. Just kind of like that's where my head's at with this. Explain like why am I doing that? Here's what I ended up doing. It's 24 inches center to center for where the bumper's going to attach and I divided it up eight, eight, and eight. I felt like that that was going to work really well. So I'm just going to spot this on right quick. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn on the back and just work my way out this way. Let her rip. Be fine. Let me get this fuel cell. I'm gonna drop this fuel cell in. I think I'm gonna paint everything um, before, and then I'll. I think that what I'll do here 
I'm not going to actually drill the holes for the mount bolts for the fuel cell until after I'm hanging to do a final assembly. But I'm going to drop it in. All right. Oh, I am loving this. Personally, this episode here really enjoyed this. It seemed like it just really flowed. It was like once I figured out like how to do the fuel cell and do this inside structure and mount it into it, it was just real easy to get it to all come together. It all made sense. It all plugged together really quick. And then it was the same deal on the outside structure. Conceptually, once I figured out kind of what it was going to look like, it was just like it went together just so easy for me. Um, and I love it when it goes like that on a build. Um, and then I could see really clearly that it was accomplishing all the goals I set out for. I don't think I could make anything safer lighter than this because I don't want any weight behind that rear axle that I can avoid but safety first every time. So just tickled with this. Hope you are as well. Thumbs up button if you are. And hey, leave your comments because this is one way to do it and I'm trying to evolve and get better but if you've got suggestions on an alternative to it, maybe I incorporate it, that into my next build, but maybe somebody sees that and they come up with an even better design than this. And by all means, be subscribed because I want to see you next time.